Hey, welcome back. So in the last video we set up our account view. Now it's time to, well, enable us to actually change well the name here, save this, and of course, upload the file and display it here. So let's start by, well, just changing the name because it's a very simple part, right? In my routes file here, I'm using this post save account action here in my user controller. Notice action, this function doesn't exist yet. So I will create it. Public function, and then post update user. My brain is not that good today. Post, post save account, well close. Post save account. And here we will get a request. So let's just inject it here. And the first thing we're going to do, as always, when we're getting data from a form, is we're validating it. So I will call the validate method, pass the request, and well define my rules. Now the only rule I want to have here is that my first name, that is the name of the input field in the account late.php file, well this first name it should be required and should be no longer than 120 characters because that is the rule we have here when we're creating a user, so we shouldn't change it here, right? So this is the validation. Um, the next thing is I want to retrieve my current user and I can again use the auth facade to do so. So I will set the first name by typing first name and then while assigning the first name passed into this function through the request. So what we were entering or what we entered in the form. I can already, oops, I can already then save the user or update it. Important, use update, not save, because we're not creating a new one, we're overwriting the old one. So you can do this anyway. Next thing is I want to, well, upload the file, but only if there is a file, of course. So I start by getting the file from the request. I can do this by using my request object here which I'm injecting into this method. And here I will call the file method. Now in this file method, I specify the name of the file and this is image because I will show you in the account.later.php file, I, I, I set a name of image to this input field, to this file input field here. So this is the name I'm using here, this image name. And the next thing is I'm going to set a file name. Now this file name will always be the first name of the user, let's say. Then we want to have a dash. And then we want to have the ID of the user so that we've got a unique file name. Of course, we could also only use the ID, but I think it's a nicer file name if you have some actual, actual text in it. Therefore, I'll choose the name as well. And then we need the extension and I will only allow JPEGs here. I will always set this to JPEG because I know I'm only getting JPEGs because I'm saying this in the form. Now obviously you could upload whatever you want. You could upload PDFs, PNGs, JPEGs, and I'm not doing any checks here. So obviously implementing such checks would be a good, great idea and is of course doable in Laravel. Now here I only want to show you how to upload, store, and fetch the file. Therefore, I'm making this simple and I'm just using this JPEG extension here. So then I want to check if, well, actually a file was retrieved from the request. So here we're getting the file. Now I'm checking if, well, we did actually get anything. If this is the case, then I want to store it. And I use the storage facade for this. Make sure to use it to use illuminate support facade storage here. The storage facade is a helper, like all the facades in Laravel, which allows us to access Laravel's powerful storage engine. Now this engine is quite complex if you want it to be so, and it basically allows us to store files of any kind on our file system, on our, um, yeah, on our server, so to say. We can configure this storage here in our config folder in the filesystem.php file. The default configuration is fine for us here, but you can set up different drivers for like say, if you want to use external storage on Amazon S3, or we can set up different drivers for our server here. Change the storage path. By default, it is app here in this 
storage folder but if we create a new folder here then we would have to change this app to the new folder name if we want to use that and so on so this is a really powerful engine allowing us a, a lot of customization and yeah we can really set up do we want to store it external in a cloud or on our server and so on now through the storage facade we can easily then access all these settings and store files in a very natural way, in a very intuitive way, without having to worry about, okay, which folder do we have to access, on which folder are we currently, and so on. So all we do here is, well, we first say, which disk do we want to use? It will be the local disk. And disk, if you go back to the config file, just refers to this area here, to disks area. Now here we set up the local disk, the FTP disk, the S3 disk, and here you can see the local disk is actually local on our server. It has the local driver and uses this app storage folder. We could also use the S3 disk to well use Amazon S3 if you have of course provided your uh, setup details here. Okay, so this is the storage. We're saying first, okay, which disk do we want to use? So which file system, where do we want to store the files? In this case, local. And then we just say, okay, put, because we want to put a file there. Uh, what do we want to put? Well, file name should be the, the name of the file it should get. We could also have some subfolders in our file name. So if we have in our app storage, let's say a folder for each user, we don't have to change this in our config here and create a new disk to well, let's say route to this user, because we might not even know the users if we dynamically create those folders, right? In this case, we can also in our file name just include a new folder by, well, adding just a slash. Now, obviously this folder has to exist, but in theory, we can do this. Now here, I'm saving everything in the root folder. Now, if you want to know more about storage and Laravel file system, I'll attach a link to the very useful documentation in the description. So this is um, how we put it, but we're only specifying the file name so far. We also need to say which file to put. Now we can't use file here. What we will have to use is file. And this is again a facade we're using here. So make sure you're using this file facade and then get file. So this will store the actual file. It's just a helper method, basically transforming this in a format and doing all the stuff in the background that Laravel is easily able to put this file where we want it to be. So there was a lot of talking, but that's very important to understand. But now in the end with this command, we're storing our file through the Laravel storage engine in the destination we specified in the fastest config and if we did so in any subfolders we're specifying the file name. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to return a redirect to the account route so that we reload our account page. So this will store the file and now there is one last thing required. Now we're storing the file but we won't be able to see it. To do so, to, do, to be able to see it, we have to make sure that we're providing this route here, this account image route, where we then actually retrieving this file. Because we can't provide a direct link to the storage folder, it's protected by default. It's not like our CSS or JavaScript folders in the public folder, it's in storage folder, and this folder is not accessible by the public. Therefore, we need a separate route to access this file. I will create this route, and I will just create it down here, right below the update account route. Route get, and this will be user image, whoops, image, and then slash file name, because we're, we're specifying which file we want to retrieve when accessing this route. Then again, I will use a controller here, user controller, and here I will use the get user image action. Now this route will of course also have a name and the name should be account.image. Okay, now the last part is in our user controller, I'll add a new function, public function 
get user image and we will have the file name as an argument passed into this function and here I will get this file again through the storage system so I will just access disk local get and then the file name this is how we get a file and we know it exists because we're only executing this route in our view here if we found it in our storage through the has method here. So again, we're using our local disk here with the storage facade and with has, we're just checking if this file exists. We're not getting it, we're just checking if it exists. If it does exist, well then, we can get it through this function here. And all I do, do here is, I will return a new response here and this response will be our file and status code 200. Now, why am I not returning a new route or a redirect? Because this route is accessed through this source attribute. So we don't want to redirect to any page here. We want to provide the actual file here, the link to that file. And we're doing this by returning this as a response in our user controller just a file as a pure response and this response can be handled because the route is called by our image element which wants to have an image file, right? So let me save this and I'll reload this account page and I will upload an image of myself. Save account. Now obviously we got an arrow here, let's, let's see what it is. Okay, important arrow here. If using this response here, I also need to import it. So make sure you use Illuminate HTTP response. Now let me save this and reload. And now you can see, bam, here I am, here is my image. And this should work for you too. So this is how we do file upload through the storage system level, obviously the basics only so far. How we can, well, upload a user image and how we can change our account. See you in the next videos, bye.